All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James Oldfield here with you, and so glad you're with us this afternoon. Um, just to get right into it, a pretty uh, uh, exciting program for you today, I believe. Something that uh, was not expected happened, and so uh, it's going to make for a very interesting program, I believe, and I hope a good Bible study with you. I uh, hope that it will be something that's beneficial to you and help you to see really that how how easily how easily truth can help us see the light and shine the light on uh, error in ways that maybe we hadn't thought of before. You know, Jesus said in Matthew seven uh, verse seven, he said, "Asking it shall be given you; seeking it shall find." Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And I told you a while back about a Bible study that I was supposed to have with um, members of the Jehovah's Witness <clears throat> Church, religious group, whatever, and... Um, uh, Andrew, one of their elders, uh, came by. I, I remember I was, um, two ladies came out to my door and we had a discussion and I said I'd be interested in a Bible study and so uh, about a week later, I guess, or you know, four or five days later, uh, it might have been a week later, I can't remember, um, Andrew came by and we were supposed to have a Bible study on April the 7th. At 10 o'clock, there's a Saturday, April 7th, he's going to come to the house and we're going to sit down at the kitchen table and, and have a Bible study. And, well, you know, as I told you, he stood me up. He's a no-show. And which really wasn't, you know, I guess I guess that's fairly typical of preachers in general and especially Jehovah's Witness. They do not like to study the Bible. They say they do, but they don't. And so I just, you know, really, I mean, I was, I was prepared. I had some, I had some Bible questions that I wanted to ask him, and uh, some things I wanted to go over, and just, you know, to see what he had to say because I'm, I'm curious about what people believe. I know it's one thing to read what people say, but then when you get to talk to someone who's actually a member of that particular denomination, um, you know, they may say some things or believe some things that you don't know about it or, you know, they may, may in, enlighten you in some ways on what they teach or what they believe that you don't know about. And so it's always good to, to have that reasoning together and sitting down and have a Bible study. And that's, that's really what I wanted. Uh, the day that, that um, he came by, uh, I remember I, I was, he actually pulled up uh, behind me. Uh, I was, I stopped and got out of my car to get the mail out of the mailbox and, um, uh, he pulled up beside me, and uh, he was coming down the road behind me, pulled up beside me, and introduced himself, and we uh, started talking, and so uh, that's when we agreed, you know, we're going to have a Bible study in two days. That was a, that was a Thursday, and they were supposed to, we were going to meet on a Saturday. And so when he stood me up, I thought, well, this is, you know, this is never going to happen. This is never going to take place, which, you know, like I said, wasn't too surprising that it didn't take place, but then... Uh, it finally did take place. There, a Bible study actually took place of sorts. And I'm going to tell you, it wasn't what I was expecting. And I know, I know it was not what he was expecting. But I believe the results were just as good, if not better, uh, as a result of the Bible study coming about this way and happening the way it did. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you some information uh, regarding some of the things that were said and then sh show you also what the Bible has to say about the matter and make sure that you're getting a word from the Lord is what we're going to be doing. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Friends, I want, I want to tell you, uh, uh, give our, our content information, a word from the Lord at gmail.com, a word from the Lord at gmail.com. If you want to email me, that's how you can do that. Uh, my phone number is 276-340-2653, 276-340-2653, and you can call me a part of this program 
Right now, we're live, and it is the area code 336, and the phone number is area code 336-427-9696. That's 427-9696. 427-WMYN or 627-9563, 627-9563-627-WLOE. Uh, that's the station numbers or you can call me at 276-340-2653 and, and we'll be glad to, to take your call and, and, we'll, and this will be a program you know, where you can uh, have some, we can have some dialogue with each other and we can ask questions and if you have some questions about what, what uh, I'm saying, then well, let's just dig into the Bible and let's find out what the Lord has to say about the matter and let that be the, the deciding factor. And so uh, that's what we're going to be doing, only we're going to be doing it with the Bible study that took place with uh, Mr. Andrew, and I forget his name, he comes up uh, later on in the program. Uh, we'll just call him Andrew for right now. And that's what we're going to go from that. So, if you want to be a part of the program, 336-427-9696, 427-9696-427-WMYM, or 627-9563, 627-WLOE, or 276-340-2653, 276-340-2653. All kinds of ways where you can get in touch with us. Now, if you want to, if you want to assemble with the Church of Christ, uh, which is bringing you this program, we meet at 250 Boulevard in uh, Eden. Uh, Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship, and Thursday nights at 7 p.m. for Bible study. So uh, come out and visit with us. Be glad to uh, see you and glad to uh, have a Bible study with you. All right. So this Bible study, this Bible study that took place with, with Andrew, it really, it wasn't with me. And that's why I'm saying that, uh, the Bible study finally took place, but it wasn't with me, and it wasn't what I was expecting. And I know it wasn't what he was expecting because he actually had it with my daughter. Uh, my my daughter is a student at uh, Rockingham County, or Rockingham Community College. I keep saying Rockingham County Community College, but it's just RCC, not RCCC. Rockingham Community College. And um, uh, Andrew had told me He'd mentioned this in passing that he had gone he had gone over to the uh, RCC campus before, and I think I even mentioned that my daughter was a student over there. But in any way, uh, he and another gentleman were passing on information, and so my daughter stops and talks to him. And I want to let you listen to part of the uh, the, the the conversation, <clears throat> the study. He starts giving her the spiel about some of the the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, Online stuff. They're they're pushing this big app. If they knock on your door, they're going to uh, try to push and, and get you to look at go to jw.org and give you this app information for your phone and your tablet and so forth. And uh, that's really what he was starting talking to her about. And so, uh, but some of the some of the conversation, uh, there's some background noise and people come up and they're talking and it's kind of hard to hear in some parts of it. But um, some of the things that that Jayla was asking him is really what I want to focus on. And so let's just, uh, I want you to listen to what, um, what you have to say. Now, uh, she, she sent me a text and she said, the, uh, the, the, the JWs are here at school. And I said, well, I said, I said, here's what you ask them. You know, she said, what should I ask them? And so I was telling her some things to ask and she did a very good job. And uh, so this is, uh, this is how it goes. So what, what's your name? Alright, here we go. Sorry about that. So, what, what's your name? My name is Andrew, this is Frank. Hi. And you are? Jayla. Jayla? Mm -hmm. Jayla. Yeah. I know. Is that Jamaica? Mm, no, <laughs> I know it, it's was, Genoi. it was. It was supposed to be a biblical name. Alright, so. So there she tells she says her name's Jayla and he says Andrew and that's Frank and then he asks her questions about her name and so forth. Uh, this is I think this is her first question to him. Okay, so so I have a question. Um okay. so can do you read the Bible and understand it, or do you have to have like other writings as well? Uh, you have to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. And you've got to not have preconceived 
ideas mm -hmm. about the Bible. Do you understand how the Bible came to us? Uh, all right. All right. Now, I, I stopped right there because I thought that was a very interesting answer that Andrew gave her. He, you know, he thought for a long time, do you believe the Bible? Well, now friends, let me tell you. The reason why he paused a long time there is because she asked him, can you understand the Bible or do you need other writings? Now, he paused a long time because he believes you need other writings. But see, they can't tell you that. I mean, if you ask someone, if, if you ask someone, do you believe the Bible or do you need something else more than the Bible? And they say, yeah, you need something more than the Bible. That right there, that closes the door. End of sale, right? I'm, I'm not talking to you anymore. So he had to say, well, you have to study with no preconceived ideas. Now keep this in mind. Remember what he said there. No preconceived ideas. And you have to study with no preconceived ideas because, friends, that's going to come right around and bite him later on. He doesn't know it, but that's really what, what, what uh, he's really laid a trap for himself. Now, I wonder why he didn't quote the Watchtower. Now, the Watchtower, that's their, that's their material. That's their organization. Because here's what the Watchtower says. In 1910, in 1910, now the Watchtower was, or uh, Joe's Witness started by Charles Taz Russell and uh, uh, Judge Rutherford. They were the, the big movers and shakers in the beginning. But this is what the Watchtower says about the Jehovah's Witness organization, what they believe and what they teach. This is from September the 15th, 1910. All right. Now, if they've changed, if they've changed and don't believe this anymore, you have to ask the question, why did you change? Was it not the truth? Was If it wasn't the truth in 1910, then why were you teaching it? And if it, you know, and if it was the truth, then why don't you still teach it? But here it is, 1910, September 15th from the Watchtower. It says, quote, if the six volumes of scripture studies are practically, are practically the Bible topically arranged with the Bible proof text given, we might, impro we might not improperly name the volumes the Bible in an arranged form. That is to say, they are not merely comments of the Bible, but they are practically the Bible itself. Now, now stop there, folks. Listen. When someone says, well, we've just rearranged the Bible topically, so everything that we've written is it's basically the Bible. Well, friends, there's an old saying that is, and that is this, if it's, if it's new, it ain't true. And if it's true, it ain't new. And if you, if, if you need something, and if it's the same as the truth, you don't need it. Because we already have the truth. All right? If it's more than the Bible, we don't need it. Because it's too much. If it's less than the Bible, we don't want it because it's not enough. And if it's the same as the Bible, why do we need it? We already have the Bible. And so they're saying that their studies, their scripture studies, are, are basically the Bible. And really, that's all you need. Now, it, the quote goes on. It says, Furthermore, not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible itself, but we see also that if anyone lays the scripture studies aside after he has read them for 10 years, if he lays them aside and ignores them and goes to the Bible alone, out of experience, our experience shows that within two years he goes into darkness. On the other hand, if he has merely read the scripture studies, uh, with their references and had not read a page of the Bible as much, he would be in the light at the end of two years. Now, my friends, I have a question for that. If the scripture studies are practically the Bible and they're not different than the Bible, then why would you say that if you read the Bible alone, you're going to darkness? But if you stick with the studies in Scripture, or Scripture studies alone, you'll be in the light. It must be that the Scripture studies are supposedly offering you more than the Bible. Because the Scripture studies keep you from going into darkness. But if you read the Bible alone, 
then you go into darkness. Now, isn't that strange? Isn't that strange to call your product, the, the scripture studies, you're saying, well, it's, it's practically the Bible. It's just a Bible. You know, you, we might, we might, we could very well say that it's the Bible in an arranged form, and it's not really comments on the Bible. It's it's practically the Bible itself. But if you read the Bible itself, you go into darkness. Well, friends, I submit to you that if the studies and scriptures are practically the Bible, and reading the Bible alone will send you into darkness, then therefore reading the studies and scriptures, the scripture studies alone will lead you into darkness because they're practically the Bible too. See how twisted this is? But I wonder why I wonder why Andrew didn't tell my daughter that. I wonder why he didn't tell her. Well, yeah, you really you 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 need more than the Bible. See, because that just that just would not sell. That just would not sell. Now, let's move on down a little bit. Let's come to nineteen fifty one. In nineteen fifty one, the watchtower, June fifteenth, nineteen fifty one, page three seventy five, says this. If each of us were left to himself just because he has a copy of the Bible and were to direct his movements independently as he thought he understood the word, what? It is likely or possible that there would be a great deal of confusion or working in competition against us. Hence, besides individually possessing God's word, we need a theocratic organization. Yes, besides having God's spirit of illumination, a Christian needs Jehovah's theocratic organization in order to understand the Bible. In other words, you need the Jehovah's Witness Church, the Watchtower organization, you need them as well as the Bible, or you won't understand it. Now I wonder why he didn't tell her that. Because that's what he believes. Surely that's what he believes. It's, it's the Watchtower, I mean, it's their writings. See that? But why did he tell her that? Well, because if you tell her that, then that just that's a that's a tune out right then. Well, you have to study. Yeah, well go ahead and just tell the truth. Don't be deceiving. Let's look at one more. This is February fifteenth, nineteen eighty one. Nineteen eighty one. Quote, we all need help to understand the Bible, and we cannot find the scripture guidance we need outside of Quote, the Faithful and Discreet Slave Organization. Now, that's what the watch, Watchtower calls themselves, the Faithful Servant. They call themselves the Faithful Servant, and you need, you need the Jehovah's Witness Organization in order to, to stay in the light, in order to have the spiritual guidance you need. I wonder why he didn't tell her that. Now, friends, you should already see right now that when you're dealing with someone who does not believe the Bible, that you you need to be on guard, right? You need to be on guard. Because they, they will say they believe the Bible, but they really don't. And I can see it right now. You can see right now why Andrew would not want to study the Bible with me. But what he doesn't know is he's actually studying the Bible with me because I told Jayla the questions to ask him. All right, now, so this is, this is, this is my point, friends. When you get to ask questions of someone, when you get to ask questions of someone, then you get to find out what they believe, and you get to see if they really believe their own writing. All right, you get to, you get to uh, see if they even believe their own writing. All right, let's listen to it. let's listen to some more here. Uh, I'm trying to uh, find out if this is. And it says, what verse is this again? All right, so he, he asks her to, to read some texts. All right, he's, he's getting her to read verses. And what he's doing, he's going to show her all the errors, quote-unquote errors of the King James Bible, okay? So here he is, and I think they're reading, I think this is First John 5, verse 7. No, I meant what chapter and book. And, okay, so First, first John, John, first John 5, 7, okay. 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the Trinity, doesn't it? Yeah. Hit that. Hit this. Look at the kingdom in linear. What does it say? Um, because three are the ones bearing witness. 
that's all this in the original. All right, so what he's trying to do, he's trying to convince her that the doctrine of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is false. And the reason why he wants to do that is because he doesn't believe that Jesus is God, that he's deity. He believes that Jesus is simply an angel. So he goes through these texts, and he's showing, he's showing her how to use this app, and, uh, and he's going through this text as he does this. Now, uh, I think he shows her a couple more. Good morning. Uh, all right, somebody comes up, and he talks to him. Let's see if I can get on down here. Uh, so does your manual not have the unnecessary scriptures? Yes. Okay, so basically he's saying he's showing her all the so-called spurious texts, the texts that should not be in the Bible. And uh, uh, he, he's, of course, he's picking on the, the King James Version. And he's setting up to say that the Jehovah's Witness is a better translation. And so, so Jayla simply asks, you know, if the Jehovah's Witness has a better translation. Okay. okay, so that would mean that... Revelation 111. So does your manual not have the unnecessary scriptures? Yes, sorry. Okay. okay, so that would mean that technically your manual is a better translation. This Bible? Translation, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if... <clears throat> okay, so so he says, yeah, you know, the, the New World Translation, his Bible is a better translation. Now, friends, they said they've taken out all the, the, the unnecessary texts, all right? In other words, he says the King James was used, they, they used the text, and they added things that were not necessary. Well, I just want you to notice, just for example, if you read in your New World Translation, and you read Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8 and verse uh, 36 and verse 37. When you read about Philip and the eunuch, the Bible says that as you know, Philip opened his mouth and began to teach the eunuch Jesus, preaching to him Jesus. And verse 36, as they came to the certain as they went on their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Now, verse 37 says, And Philip said, If thou believest with thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, if you look at this, if you look at that verse in the, uh, uh, the New World translation, it's not going to be there. It won't be there because they don't want Jesus to be the Son of God. So what he just told Jayla was, yeah, we took out all the unnecessary texts. We took out all the unnecessary versions. As a matter of fact, let me just read uh, Acts chapter 8 to you. This is from the New World Translation. Acts chapter 8, uh, verse 37 is not there. There's a star there. There's a star beside it, which tells you it's a footnote. <clears throat> and the footnote says, uh, let's see. Uh, Appendix A3. Now, <clears throat> you may recall that we've had um, we we had some uh, discussion with Jehovah's Witness on the street uh, in Eden uh, once before, about a year or so ago, and you know they were surprised that that was not in their text, and so they have to go to a footnote, and they give all this big long footnote about why it shouldn't be in there. Uh, because they just don't want the Bible to say Jesus is the Son of God. That's what they get around. So they have they have uh, Acts 8 and verse 37. They just have a couple of lines there, and then they give you a little footnote. Go to the footnote, and then go to the appendix, and then go to the you know A3 in the appendix, and we'll explain to you in several pages why we have this, we've taken this verse out. Well, why would why would a verse that says Jesus Christ is the Son of God, why would that not need to be in the text? Why would that be a spurious text? Why would that be a bad text? All right? Now, let's move on because I've got a lot of ground to cover and I want, I want you to uh, 
hear this, okay? So now Jed is going to ask him another question. Okay, so if yours is the better translation, does that mean that everybody has to be a Jehovah's Witness to be saved? By following your yeah, there, translation? There are, there, are, there are millions of individuals who are dead in the grave that's going to be coming back in resurrection. Now, friend, do you find that kind of strange? She simply said, well, if you've got the right Bible, you've got the correct Bible, do, do, does a person need to be a member of the Jehovah's Witness Church in order to be saved? And all he said was, well, there's millions of people in the grave that are going to be in the resurrection. What does that got to do with being in the Jehovah's Witness? I mean, what does that have to do with the price of apples in China? That has nothing to do with it. That, I mean, she said, do you have to be a Jehovah's Witness to be saved? And he says, well, there's, there's millions of people in the grave that's going to be raised in the resurrection. Okay. That's like, that's like someone saying, well, can I borrow your lawnmower? And I say, well, my dog's sick. Well, what does that have to do with it? I need to borrow your lawnmower. Well, the sun rises in the east. What does that have to do with it? But, you see, this man is trying to get around answering a question. And, he, and he's, he's talking to a to an 18-year-old girl. And, and, and he's not telling her the truth, and yet you, you think that he's going to tell you the truth? I mean, he's, tra he's trying to hoodwink Jayla. He's trying to hoodwink her. All right, now, uh, so he goes on and, and answers, or he answers this question in his own way. But I wonder, why didn't he explain all the problems that the New World Translation has and all the preconceived ideas that were used in translating the New World Translation? And he said, well, James, what are you talking about? Well, let me just show you. Let me just... Uh, um, point out some things to you. All right, <clears throat> the New World Translation. Uh, in um, there's there's a number of Greek scholars that have said very bad things about the New World Translation as far as the accuracy of it. Um, now, some of these you may have known if you if you've done any kind of studying at all, you may recognize the name Bruce Metzger. Uh, Bruce Metzger, a professor of New Testament at Princeton University, says the New World Translation was a frightful mistranslation, erroneous and pernicious and reprehensible. And if the Jehovah's Witness take this translation seriously, they are polytheists. That means they believe in more than one God. Now, uh, William Barclay, Dr. William Barclay, he's a Greek scholar. He said it's abundantly clear that a sect that can translate the New Testament like that is intellectually dishonest. Now the reason why he would say that, friends, is because they put their own ideas in the translation. Let me just tell you about their scholarship. The, the, the individuals that translated the New World Translation, now this is something that Andrew wouldn't tell you. He wouldn't tell anybody this. But the New World Translation was translated by... Uh, I think it was a, a panel of five people. I see there was it was Nathan Knorr, uh, Albert Schroeder, George uh, Gangus, Fred France or France Franks, uh, and M. Uh, Henschel. And this is just how how astute these guys were. Um. Fred, Fred France was the only one with sufficient knowledge of the Bible languages. He, uh, this is what uh, uh, Raymond France wrote uh, in his book uh, concerning the, the New World Translation. He said, uh, Franks had studied Greek for two years in the University of Cincinnati and was only self-taught in Hebrew. Four of the five men on the committee had no Hebrew or Greek training at all. They had only a high school education. 
Uh, Frank studied Greek for two years at the University of Cincinnati, but dropped out after his sophomore year. When asked in a Scotland courtroom if he could translate Genesis 2-4 into Hebrew, France replied that he could not. The truth is France was unable to translate Hebrew or Greek. Now you say, well, how did they get away with this? How did, how did they get away with translating it? Well, here's what they said. This is what the Watchtower said about the translation committee. The what? Now, this is Jehovah's Witness writing. They said a translation committee of experienced, anointed Christians was organized to produce the New World Translation of the Holy Scripture in English. Listen again. Unexperienced? Two years of Greek? Come on, folks. I mean, I've had two years of Greek and I wouldn't dare attempt to translate the Bible from Greek into English. All right? I've had, I've had that much training. At least... Uh, so, uh, I mean, I studied in school. No, I, I wouldn't say I had two years. But we studied for one for one uh, one year. But I wouldn't dare attempt to translate the Bible just a year or two years. This guy didn't know how to, how to read Hebrew. But yet the New World Translation says that it was an experienced and anointed. Now, what does that mean? Friends are telling you they believe that they were inspired. Here again. Here again, uh, Fred Franz was asked to explain how translation and interpretation of the Bible were made, and he said, they passed to the Holy Spirit who invisible communicates with Jehovah's Witnesses and the publicity department. Fred Franz is the head of the publicity department. So, so what we're talking about here, we're talking about we're talking about the uh, the man who translated the the New World Translation, who had the most experience. We have him saying, uh, "Yeah, the Holy Spirit guided us into all truth. The Holy Spirit guided us." Now, is that are you really going to trust that? Is that is that who you're going to believe? And so, by anointed, what they mean is they mean inspired. So. Uh, not only did Jehovah's Witness believe that the Watchtower is inspired, they believe that the New World translation is translated by inspiration. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, don't confuse that with the Mormons, because that's exactly what we're talking about. Isn't it interesting, friends, how these groups all <laughs> make the same claims, and yet their translations are so horrible when it comes to accuracy? I mean, whether we're talking about the Watchtower, the New World Translation uh, Bible, we're talking about the, or we're talking about the Mormons and the and the Book of Mormon, they just they just can't get it right because they're not inspired. Now, uh, some of the things that the New World uh, Translation has changed, I'm, I'm not going to go through some of these, uh, all of these, but just to show you how they try to put their uh, twist on things. For example, in Matthew 25. In verse 46, Matthew 25, verse 46, here's what the King James uh, Bible says. Matthew 25 and verse 46, it says, These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now, the Jehovah's Witness do not believe that there's life after death. In other words, they, when you die, you're like Rover, you're just dead all over. So they changed eternal punishment in Matthew 25, 46, and it says, to everlasting cutting off. So they changed punishment, which indicates continuous torture, torment, punishment, and they added into it this idea of, well, you know, termination, you know, annihilation. That's what they believe. They think when you die, that's it. Well, that's, that's what the atheists say. You know, when you're, when you're dead, there's nothing after it. <clears throat> um, let's see if we can find one more. Oh, Luke 23 and verse 43. Now, this is one that everybody's going to be familiar with, the thief on the cross. Jesus told the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise. Well, the New World Translation says, today, I tell you today, you will be with me. Well, he was with him right then. 
So what's the comfort in that? I mean, if I tell you well, we're fixing to die, and I say, you know what? Today you're going to be with me. Well, I'm already with you. Right? So what's, you know, there, there's no hope there. There's no comfort there. But when Jesus said to the thief, today you'll be with me in paradise, oh, okay, so when this life is over, there's something, there's something coming up. There's another life remaining. Not for the Jehovah's Witness. See? They, they, they don't believe that there's anything after this life. So, so uh, they think when you're dead, you're, you're just like Rover, you're dead all over. So now, uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, I know we've talked about this before. Um, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Jehovah's Witness have, you know, the New World Translation has that, and the Word was a God, little g, a little g. And so they make Jesus not deity. They don't, they, 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 uh, don't want him to be deity. Um, here's another one. Hebrews 1 and verse 8. Thy throne, O God, uh, is what the, what the King James says. Well, the New World Translation says, God is your throne. So they just don't want Jesus to have deity. So they don't address him as the Son. Uh, they don't address it as God because they, they deny that he has any divine nature. And so uh, you, you can tell how they have inserted their own preconceived ideas into their own translation. Now, when Andrew was talking about the King James, that's what he said. He said, oh, yeah, you know, you, you know they, they just inserted these things because they're trying to get the Trinity in there. Well, you inserted things to try to get your doctrine in there, and you rewrote the whole Bible to do it. And not only that, remember what he said in the beginning? He said, you've got to study the Bible with no preconceived ideas. But the Bible that he uses, the New World Translation, is founded upon preconceived ideas. So that, that tells you right there that, the, uh, that, they're, not, that they're not honest. All right? That the New World Translation is, is based upon uh, dishonesty. All right? Now, here we go. Let's listen to this. You can go to appendix here. Mm -hmm. Go to how the Bible came to us. All right, and see. Because you know we have none of the originals. There's none of they're called uh, autographs. There's none of the original autographs. Mm -hmm. So people say, well, how do you know it's the Bible? But this actually shows you how the Bible. And you, you're you're familiar with the the Dead Sea Scrolls, and what the Dead Sea Scrolls proved was that God's name had been taken out of the Bible. It's only four times in the King James. It was originally in the Bible 7,000 times. Mm -hmm. Y-H-W-H, the tetragram of it. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh. But if you say Yahweh for Jehovah, it's Yeshua for Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, now, so he says, he says he's criticizing the King James because they only translated uh, Yahweh, Jehovah, four times. And, and that's true. I mean, that's, that's true. But... There's not a, that's not a problem. I mean, the King James has translated uh, words uh, differently um, in, in several different places, but it didn't change the meaning of it. But now, if you want to see a preconceived idea, just look at Isaiah 6. The Jehovah's Witness, they translate words that should not have been translated Jehovah, and they make them Jehovah because they want Jehovah to be you know, I mean, that's their name, Jehovah's Witness. So they want to, so they make words that are never translated Jehovah, and they make them Jehovah. Like, for example, Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6, this is the King James. The King James Version says, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now, that word, Lord, it's not Jehovah. It's not Yahweh. It's Adonai. All right? It, it, it's, you know, it's, it's never translated Jehovah, but in the New World Translation, guess what is translated? It's translated Jehovah. So they take the word Lord. Every time they say the word Lord, what? Well, we just make it Jehovah. Because they're trying to get their religion's name in there. And so you talk about preconceived ideas and biases. I mean... And friends, I'm just saying I don't understand how uh, 
you know, how they can honestly uh, be this way. How they can honestly uh, say that they're true to the text, that they're true to the, the Bible, and they're honestly trying to get a better translation. When it's evident, it's painfully clear that they're just reading into it. They're just reading into the text their own, uh, uh, you know, their own doctrine. Their own doctrine. Now, let me uh, let me say this before I, I move on. Uh, you know, there there are a lot of things that we could look at that the Jehovah's Witness have changed in their version to promote their doctrines. But friends, the King James Version, when you read the King James, if they added words, they italicized them. They italicized them so that you would know we've added these and they add them for clarity. And a lot of times if you take those words out, you don't, you don't miss anything. You know, as a matter of fact, sometimes, uh, sometimes it's, it makes it even clearer. Like in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, I'm going to give you an example here, Ecclesiastes uh, 12 and verse 13. Psalms said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. But they added a couple words. They added is and duty. Now this is what it would read if you took away those words. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this the whole of man. Now, is adds a little something to it. This is the whole of man. So if you want to be a whole person, you've got to fear God and keep his commandments. And I'm just saying with the New World Translation, they don't do that with, with, their, with their writings. They don't do that with their writings. They, they want to mislead. They want to uh, uh, connive, right? They're sneakily trying to get their doctrine in and make you think that they have a better version. But their, their version of the Bible was translated by four guys that didn't know the original languages and supposedly were inspired. They claim inspiration. I'm not buying that, friends. I'm not buying that. Um, I would stand the King James Bible up to any modern version as far as accuracy that there is. Now, you heard him when he was talking to Jelly, he was talking about the Dead Sea Scrolls. And friends, this, may, this is another lesson for another time, but the King James Bible, he's right, there are no original autographs. There are no original writings of the Bible uh, in existence. I mean, we're talking about 2,000 years. But there are copies, there are copies that go back to the first century of New Testament writings. And there are copies of the Old Testament that are uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were written a thousand years before the text that was used to write the King James Bible. And it was like 95 or 96, 97% accurate. I mean, the only differences were like. Just, uh, little markings, you know, periods and dots, things like that, different spelling variations, but nothing major were different over a thousand years. So what that does, that gives you confidence that the Masoretic text that was used for the King James Bible, the Old Testament, uh, it was identical to what was written a thousand years before it. So friends, I'm confident that what we have in the Old Testament what was translated from those texts, those Old Testament texts, is the Word of God. So I don't need some some guy with two years of Greek and self-taught Hebrew translating the Bible for me. No, thank you. I'll just take the King James. Now, all right, let me get on this. So this is really where it gets good. So they continue talking a little bit, and I think Jay is having to go to work, so they're getting ready to part ways. And here's the conversation. Um, I feel like I'm kind of taking a step of my time here. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, well, thank you for stopping. You're welcome. What's hey, your name again? Andrew Patron. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know you. You were the one who 
was supposed to debate my dad. Uh oh. Oops. James Oldfield. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I did go back to him. He wasn't honest with me. <laughs> no, he was. No, you're gonna hear some quacking noise. That I think Jayla put those in there. But I would like to see the look on his face when she said that. Now, Jayla, I must tell you, Jayla was she had her facts wrong on some of this thing. We weren't supposed to have a have a, a debate like a televised or, or debate on the radio. I'd been glad to do that. And she's just supposed to come to my house. I was just trying to get somebody to come to my house and sit down at the kitchen table and, and have a study with me. Uh, but he said I lied to him. Listen, I'll just let you listen to it. What happened? Yeah, yeah. He, um, he didn't let me know who he was. I went online and saw how he debates online. And he actually went to one of our people mm -hmm. and actually went to one of our people and, and um, went to their house and he tried to report what they were saying. That's a lie. Just like I asked if he just reported me. And I, I didn't feel, I, I felt like he was setting me up. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was setting me up for me to come over there and he'd have some way, some way to be reporting me, trying to track me or something. All right, now, friends, let me just say this. I have no idea who he's talking about going to some lady's apartment. I've, I've, I've been to one person's home who is Jehovah's Witness that I can recall in Eden, and it was a man, not a woman. I have no idea who he's talking about. Uh, and then he says... I, I thought... Then he said that I pretended to call my wife so that I could start my recorder. Friends, I, I have no idea who he's talking about. He might be talking about some Jehovah's Witness because, I mean, I wouldn't lie about that. So that. So I don't know where he's getting his information, but seeing as how they treat the Bible, it's no wonder they would treat me this way. So he says the reason I didn't come back, that he didn't come back, was because I lied to him because I didn't tell him who I was. Friends, is that really a lie? Is that really a lie? I mean, do I have to give a resume? If Jehovah's Witness, if you want to have a Bible study of Jehovah's Witness, you better have your resume, you know, your W-2 out, you bring your Social Security number out, maybe a pint of blood, two proofs of identity or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't know what they want just to have a Bible study. So... Is that supposed to be a televised debate? No, we, we don't debate. Or a televised. discussion? and asking a question. See, if you ask a question and you honestly want to know the answer mm -hmm. and you will compare this with what you've been told, okay. that's getting information so you can understand. Mm -hmm. The debate is you already think that you know what the answer is and no matter what he says, I've been in conversations with people mm -hmm. and I'll say, well, what about this scripture? And it plainly says what I'm saying mm -hmm. and they'll argue with you. Now that's exactly what Job's Witness do. You show them a scripture that plainly teaches what you're saying and plainly contradicts what they say. And I could even show them verses in the New World Translation that would, tra that would contradict what they say. They've already got their mind made up. But friends, this is the very reason why we record things like this. Because these guys will lie when the truth sounds better. Now, you know... I don't mind him saying that I'm a liar. I've been called worse by better people. But my point is, friends, I want you to see if people will be dishonest with the Bible and they'll be dishonest with the Word of God, you know they're going to be dishonest with you. Now, uh, when... Uh, let me just see here. He says they don't debate. They, they don't debate. They, they don't have a debate. Well, friends, listen to what the New World Translation says. This is their Bible. This is their Bible. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 28, here's what it says about Paul. He remained with them, moving about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He was talking and disputing with the Greek-speaking Jews. He was disputing with them. Uh, that's having a debate, isn't it? That's having a debate. In Acts 15, let's give you one more. 
Again, this is the New World Translation. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not t quoting the trusty King James right here. I'm quoting the New World Translation. I'm quoting their book, their Bible. Acts 15. Now some men came down from Judea and began to teach the brothers. Quote, unless you get circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. But after quite a bit of dissension and disputing by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was arranged for Paul and Barnabas and some of the others to go up to the apostles and elders in Jerusalem regarding this issue. So here they are. They're, they're disputing. I mean, they got some intense discussion going on. As a matter of fact, uh, the next verse, the next verse, verses 7 and 8, verses 6 and 7, Acts 15, the New World Translation. Again, this is the Job's Witness Bible. So the apostles and elders gathered together to look at this matter, into this matter, after much intense discussion had taken place. Now there's a footnote beside that. What, what does that mean, intense discussion? Well, the Jehovah's Witness, the New World Translation footnote says... Intense discussion is the same as much disputing. Sounds to me like the New World Translation has Paul and Barnabas and Peter has them having much discussion and much dis disputation. And so that's, that's what we're talking about. And then... You heard, uh, I think his name's Frank. Frank jumps in and, and he starts talking now. He, he's, he's jumping in the conversation. And listen to what he says. Yeah, so he, 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 said he, he said he wanted a Bible study. Okay. He said, well, I'm getting, that, I'm getting that out myself. Frank says, well, pretty soon when you have a Bible, a Bible study, people, someone else jumps in and you have a big argument. Well, that's exactly what he did. He jumped in. But they're going back to me. This is what... He said, I said. Let's just listen to it. He said he wanted to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to study the Bible. He wanted to argue. He, he wanted to argue his point and debate me. And I already saw where he is capable of possibly uh, trying to uh, record. In fact, uh, it was Jean Desjardins, he went to her home, he went to her apartment, he came in, he said he was talking to his wife, mm -hmm. and with nationality he was recording the whole conversation. And that's strange, you know, because I've never known my dad to um, talk on the phone to my mom while he was... Well, he, he, what, he, he was using that as a reason to start recording. Now friends, that's a bald-faced lie right there. Jean Dejeuner, never even heard of her. Never heard of her. Never been to her apartment. Uh, you know, I just, I mean, that's a lie. He's got me confused. He may have me confused with somebody else. And that's that's fine if he wants to retract that. But I've never done that. Now, if her preacher was there, I may record the preacher. But I've never been there. I don't recognize the name. Never been to her apartment. Never been to a woman's apartment. And I surely, and if I've been to a woman's apartment, I'd probably be with my wife. So, you know, again, uh, the Jehovah's Witness, they have trouble with fact-checking. And so maybe they need to work on that. But when he says that I didn't want to have a Bible study, maybe he's got one of those, maybe he's got the uh, spirit of discerning spirit or something. Since their guys translated the Bible were moved by the Holy Spirit, maybe he's got a miraculous gift too. He thinks he knows my heart, which I can tell you I know he doesn't because I wanted to have a Bible study with him. I wanted him to sit down at my table and say, you know, answer my questions, and they won't do it. Because, friends, when you don't have the truth, you have something to hide. Now, listen to what he then says. Listen to what he says. He, he called me a liar, called me dishonest, now listen to what he says. Oh, okay. I, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not down on your dad. I'm not down on your dad. I just didn't... Uh... Well, what do you call that then, Andrew? He dishonest. He, he, he you know, he didn't want to have a Bible study. He, he lied. He didn't tell me what... But I'm not down on your dad. 
please. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, if if, uh, if if that's not downing somebody, I hate to know what it was. I mean, how would you down somebody, Andrew? You call me a liar. You call, call me a liar to my daughter's face, said I'm dishonest, lied about me. I'm talking about Barrett's false witness, said I did something I didn't do. And then I'm not talking about your dad. I'm not putting him down. Well, what? What? I'm saying, friends, this, this is the kind of people you're dealing with when you're dealing with people that aren't honest with the Bible. If they're not honest with the Bible, they're not going to be honest with you. All right? I mean, if they're going to lie about God, they'll certainly lie about a man. And just going back to uh, what he said at the beginning there, just I, I want to back up right here and listen to what he said here. Uh, you know, if, if somebody's talking to me, I, I, yeah, yeah. He, um, he didn't let me know who he was. I went online and saw how he debates online. All right, I didn't know him. I didn't let him know who I was. Again, friends, I didn't know I had to tell everybody exactly who I was and my my name, date of birth, social security number, and everything. But let me just again give you some Jehovah's Witness information, friends. This is what the Watchtower says. The Watchtower says this is 1960. Uh, June the 1st, 1960, page 352. As a soldier of Christ, he is in the the theocratic warfare and he must exercise caution when dealing with God's foes. Thus, the scriptures show that for the purpose of protecting the interests of God's cause, it is proper to hide the truth from God's enemies. I'm just playing by your rules, Andrew. I mean, the watchtower says I did all right. And here's another one, Inside on the Scriptures, Volume 2, pages 244 and 245. It says, while malicious lying is definitely condemned in the Bible, this does not mean that a person is under obligation to divulge truthful information to people who are not entitled to it. And Now, friends, did I really have to tell him my name is James Oldfield. I'm a gospel preacher. I debate preachers like yourself. I debate elders like yourself. And I'd like to have a debate with you. And I want you to come sit down at my table. And, and uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to uh, dismantle your doctrine and what you believe right in front of you. Do I have to tell you that? See? And so, uh, I, you know, Andrew, I'm just, I'm doing what your writings say I'm entitled to do. So, again, to me, it sounds like instead of being Jehovah's Witness, they're more like jumbo whiners. You know, they're more like jumbo whiners. But listen now to, uh, let's see. We're not looking. If I can get here, I think it's. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it. It is, all right, now after he says all that about me, listen to what he says about Jayla. I'll have to say that uh, he's raised a very respectful daughter. Thank you. No, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. It's good to see. And, uh, you know, in listening to him, I, I see, I see um, someone who is very knowledgeable. He's very knowledgeable, um, but we have to be careful that we're, we are not taking a doctrine, no matter how old it is, mm -hmm. goes all the way back to the third century, which is the Trinity, and basically what you're trying to do is put a square peg in a round hole. All right, so don't take an old doctrine like the Jehovah's Witnesses do. Twist it. Twist the Bible to make it fit. Well, so... The lying, dishonest guy can raise a respectable daughter. Well, I don't know. What, what am I? I'm doing something right, I guess. Not bad for a lying, dishonest, deluded, uh, false teacher, I suppose. But friends, I hope this has helped you understand that, you know what? It, it's easy to, to show the error of a false doctrine if you never get someone to talk. And you, you can show pretty quickly that they are just don't know 
what the truth really is. But we're trying to help them and hope this has helped you. Friends, I'm, I'm out of time. Uh, word from the Lord at gmail.com, 276 340 If you'd like to reach me. Until next time, thanks for listening. I always make sure that what you're getting is a word from the Lord.